You at the Radio Sport, it is uh, coming up to 8 minutes after 11 o'clock. The World Masters Games are coming to New Zealand in 2017. OK, I accept that they're not in the same realm or same league as the Rugby World Cup, a FIFA World Cup, a Cricket World Cup, but what they will bring to New Zealand apparently is an awful lot of visitors and spectators. 25,000 competitors from all around the world and 10,000 spectators. So that's a, a lot of hotel beds are going to have to be found for them and uh, the games are going to be taking place principally here in Auckland in 2017. The company that is running the World Masters Games have been able to attract a number of influential New Zealanders onto its board, which I guess is a, an indication and a reflection of how big a deal financially the World Masters Games will be to the city of Auckland and I suppose in a wider context for the country. Uh, people like Martin Sned and Barry Meister have been appointed to the board. The chairman of the board is Sir John Wells, if my memory serves me correctly, former chairman of the Hillary Commission and one of those influential New Zealanders. Martin Snedden is with me now. Good morning, Martin. Good morning, Brenda. Why did you want to sit on the board of the World Masters Games? Uh, a couple of reasons, really. One was um, uh, the event itself uh, is something that really interests me. I, I, I guess through my experience, both with New Zealand cricket and then with the Rugby World Cup, I've, I've come to appreciate and love events, and um, and this was an opportunity to get back involved in that. And secondly, just at the moment I'm working in tourism, and as you mentioned in the intro, um, there is a real uh, tourism benefit sitting here from this event, so uh, in lots of ways it sort of connects the dots with what I'm doing at the moment, um, with what this event can bring for Auckland in particular, and, and slightly wider for New Zealand. Do you know yet how many projected overseas visitors will come here for these games? Um, so the figures you've talked about, I think, were about 25,000 visitors. Um, uh, there's a balance there between how many of those come domestically and, and how many come internationally. I, I'm talking off the top of my head uh, at the moment, but I think it's probably around two thirds that are that are international visitors. Wow, that's, that's a lot. That's a good upsize. And if we, you know, that's that I think is a reasonably conservative projection, so the opportunity for us, if you like, if we can do our job well enough over the next four years is to increase that, that number um, as much as we can. Can Auckland find 25,000 beds for a one-off event like this? Yeah, it can, and that's again, there's, there's a connection here with tourism. Um, firstly, whilst the time frame for this event has not yet been finalised, I think it's pretty safe to say it's going to fall within a shoulder season, so it's not at peak tourism time, it's more likely to be in a shoulder season, which again is one of the upsides for tourism. The beds that are needed uh, are not just hotels, this is not uh, a whole range of high-end visitors that are, that are visiting, it's a, it's a whole range of different sorts of people who, who will want different types of accommodation, so in fact, uh, hotels will come into that equation, but so will motels, so will bed and breakfast, so will a range of accommodation options, so there's a nice spread across the accommodation industry, and the answer is, yep, uh, in a shoulder season, there's no doubt in my mind that Auckland can, can comfortably cope with that. Mm. You won't need any of those liners you had for the World Rugby World Cup. <laughs> yeah, probably not, I don't think. OK. Uh, one of the issues, I suppose, I, I use the word issues rather than necessarily problems for something like the World Masters Games, is that I describe it as participant sport rather than spectator sport. I mean, do you see it as a challenge for people like yourself and other members of the board to get ordinary sports fans to come along and watch World Masters Games? Um, well, it's, it, I guess the primary objective is competitors um, rather than spectators. I mean, the, 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 most of those numbers we've been talking about so far are about the number of competitors. It, and uh, so our, our initial objective, I think, is to try and um, generate as many competitors as possible. Now, they will bring with them uh, some spectators and there will be uh, naturally some people within the Auckland region that are interested in this but it, it, Brendan it, it's mainly about that the main target here is competitors uh, so you, you, we, do, we do want Auckland to connect with us and I think if, if, if we're successful in getting say 25,000 visitors into the city then that automatically will create a buzz mm, for a sure. week period or how long the event's for. Um, and this is spread across a large number of sports. So off the top of my head, it's in excess of 20 different sports. And those individual sporting competitions, um, many of them will be run by the organisations that are currently responsible for those sports. So that 
you know, again, draws in the involvement and the commitment of, of those various sports. So it's, I think it's a matter of just gradually building up the support base. And, and yes, we would love uh, as many people as possible in Auckland and perhaps wider than that to see this as a spectator event, but let's just build the base gradually over the next four years. The scary thing here, listening to you reel off some of those numbers, is that in terms of the number of sports... Uh, that the World Masters Games embrace. It's similar to, for example, uh, an Olympiad, Olympiad, Olympic Games, yeah. but you've got about twice as many competitors that go to the Olympic Games, and they're coming to Auckland. Yes, yeah, so this is, this is one of the reasons why I guess it's caught my eye. I mean, operationally, this is, this is a challenge. Um, but it's a challenge that, that we know now from, from our recent history of running events in New Zealand that, that we're well capable of meeting. I mean, the team... That, the team at AT that have been running events in Auckland in recent years have been doing a fantastic job. And, and, and now, you know, the, the, the body that I'm walking into has appointed a, a CEO, that's Jenna Wooten. Jenna has been a key part of the AT uh, events team over the last few years. She, she knows exactly how to do this and she'll build a strong team around her. Uh, it. It's, it. It's operationally challenging, but it is something we are going to nail. And did I hear a figure of for 300 million uh, being bandied around as what it's going to generate for the uh, New Zealand or is it the Auckland economy? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I know that, that both Auckland and the New Zealand government are investing in this roughly around the 10 or 11 mar million mark each. Uh, I haven't been probably pretty substantial, but I don't know whether the 300 million is the right figure. Mm. Well, I imagine it will be hundreds of millions, will it, if you've got 25? How, how long have the games last for? Uh, yeah, you're asking me to talk about detail. I think roughly it's about two weeks. Two or three weeks, I imagine. Maybe slightly longer than that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, obviously, we won't be seeing anything in Eden Park, will we? Which um, is um, uh, You know, I, I, no, not in terms of the running of the events, but, but you know, maybe the, the, the event itself probably has to have a uh, an opening sort of ceremony and, and a closing, so yeah, at some point in time the, the organising committee's going to have to think what's the right sort of venue for that. Yeah, it's interesting to know where they'd go. Where, where would you put the track and field, for example, which will be one of the big sports, I imagine, at the World Masters Games? Um, so, I don't know, we've got a track and field stadium in Auckland? Well, we've got one out at West Auckland, I suppose, isn't there? At, um, yeah, I think what Jen is starting to do now is... is is to get around those various sports that are in contention for inclusion in this event and actually start to dig hard into what are the facilities available, what's the appetite of those various sports to, to commit to being involved in this. I mean, it's not a given that every sport that we might want to have involved in this is going to say yes, and and so we've got to make sure that, that we properly inform people as to what the opportunity is and then, and then um, persuade them that it's a good thing to be involved in. So that's that's a piece of work that Jenna and her team are going to be uh, working hard on, I think, over the next few months. And I presume the people that participate, the competitors that uh, take part in this event, basically have to fund themselves, don't they? Yeah. So they, as I understand it, what happens is that they pay a registration fee um, to participate. I don't think it's over the top. I don't know what it is, but it's, it, I don't think it's, it's prohibitive. Um, but, you know, if you've got 20 5,000 people that have entered and are paying a registration fee, at least that creates a reasonable pool for us to work with alongside the, the money from, from Auckland and from the New Zealand Government. Mm. Uh, good stuff, Martin. Um, I thank you for your time. I, I wish you well. Did you enjoy the Ashes test last week? Oh, uh, compelling. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, cricket's my life and I love uh, test cricket in particular and just, you know, 